Welcome to Tang Productions. Today I'm going to talk about the sea punch in a real fight situations. Video session. I spoke about the qualities, the physical qualities that you need for developing a realistic centerline punch and to make it adaptable and flexible. So you have a s one technique, but ability or the abilities to execute it different distances and different angles. To talk about the real fight situations, but I don't want to really um, try to come across as glamorizing the um, violent situations. These are real life ex experiences that I've um, had in the past and I want to use the centerline punch uh, as an example of how it became effective in a real life situation. I have to emphasize that one, I'm not a, I'm not a fighter, I'm much more of an analyst and a survivalist. So the difference is simply a fighter enjoys fighting whereas I don't. I fight because I feel I have, have to. Um, so a fighter would go and train and they compete on a regular basis and they want to fight. And as a survivalist, is about resolving a problem by all means. And the key difference is in a sports combat is that it's staged, it's consented by both parties. You both um, agree a time, place to meet, you train up for it and you have a set of rules. And after the fight, that's the end of it. Whereas in a street situation, it's spontaneous, it's unprepared, unless they're doing a hit. Um, other, other than that, you've got to make a decision very quickly. You don't have the time to measure up. The strategy is also different. The strategy is simply Deal with the opponent when they're at the weakest. Whereas in a sports combat, you face your opponent when you're both at your reasonably strongest point, position, because you both train up to it. So I'm going to uh, now move on to three instances that I had in the past. Right, just to recap what I mean by centerline punch, the basic Wing Chun centerline punch is from here, from here, you meet the midline and it's a straight punch. Here's a profile from center and forward. The guard hand, some will guard below like this, some will guard up here. I would prefer a higher guard than a low guard. And in 1983, uh, I was teaching in a West London martial art, uh, in a West London club. And three guys came to my club and started to cause a lot of trouble. And I wasn't interested. I, I wasn't interested to, to fight at all. Um, I was there really just to teach. I had a classes packed full of people. Um, and my only interest is really, I did martial arts for self-defense and enjoyed doing it as an art and was there at a time to earn a living by teaching. So I just didn't want any trouble. Unfortunately, trouble just came. Uh, I'd never asked for it. They came along and they caused a lot of uh, 
um, embarrassment in, in the class. Um, they challenged me to a fight <laughs> to prove how good they are. Um, and uh, I've, to me, I find that very childish. It's like going back to school. I'm better than you, therefore you shouldn't be training or teaching. I find that incredibly childish. And I know some people like it and some people enjoy having these challenge matches. I don't. I'm not, as I said, I'm not a fighter. I'm a survivalist. Um, so the, the, the guys eventually, after a long time, I asked them to leave and they, they, they left, but they were still hanging around the... Uh, uh, my club and anyway cut the long story short um, I came across them I came across them later on that that, that evening and uh, there's three guys we, we I mean it was it, to me when I think back it's silly I agreed to to the uh, to the match, I thought the problem wasn't going to go away. If I didn't have, if I didn't sort it out, they'll be back, and they'll cause even more trouble. Anyway, cut the mor uh, moral of the story short. Uh, this fight took place at a direct car park um, in Helmsley. Um, the guy squared up to me, and he was incredibly confident incredibly confident he gestured like Bruce Lee it was a, it was a Chinese guy called himself Master Chan I was at a very early stages of my um, training I think I did about two or three three years I think three years of training but I did a lot of centline punch a lot of it uh, so the guy squared up uh, he advanced he advanced forward threw the hands all over the place went in the attack I just focus just on a single target, which is his chin or his mouth, because that was the most offensive part of him, his mouth. He had a massive mouth and it was very offensive. I had to shut it down. So adapting from the, from the training I did at the, uh, in the class or in the gym, I advanced with a step forward, step advance, step punch. As I step struck, he went straight down. I mean, it was a short punch. It was only about maybe eight inches. And that's the difference. That's what I'm trying to get. The point I'm making here is when we train, you, you throw the punch, it varied. It came all the way back here and it traveled maybe 24 inches. In a, in a street fight, or maybe this is not a street fight, it was both consent, consenting parties and, and agreed. Um, the punch was much shorter and I had to adapt. I adapted by facing, it, facing the person diagonally side on and taking a step forward. This was completely uh, different to what I had been training, but I had to adapt it. And that's what I mean by um, applying centline punch under various conditions and and uh, and here and it became effective so the guy went straight down i couldn't believe it so i thought i don't have another go just in case i got lucky so he got up bang same thing he went straight down got up again bang straight down i thought what the hell's going on coming here causing me trouble making me shit myself and now I just floored him straight away so I thought I'll finish it off because to me if you're going to get in a fight you've got to finish it there's no point just bang and that's it so I just <laughs> follow through mashed, mashed him up um, and that's the difference I guess with sports combat and, and uh, a street situation sports combat you would end it quickly the referee would come in and stop it with a strict situation it ends when it ends and nobody knows when it ends because after this incident who knows there might be more problems um, so the other two guys also got involved but they lacked 
mental courage, mental abilities, because they saw his head, head man went down very quickly. So in a street situation, it's not just about physical strength, more so is about mental strength. Here we have three people against one person. I had no, no, no supporters, just me and these three guys. And yet, physically, if you add the amount of people, the weight, you would say the odds is way, way against me. However, if you apply yourself um, with decisiveness, with aggression, determination, how that mental ability can turn a fiscal situation to my advantage. So that's one situation. And I end up taking them all back to, to my gym and apologise to everybody. And I've not had any trouble, had any trouble after that, which is good. And I didn't want any more trouble. when I fought in Thailand in 1988 against a Thai boxer. I had no experience in sports combat at all. I just wanted to experience and learn um, from other arts. But fortunately, I did okay. I knocked the, uh, my opponent out in the second round. And um, I remember at the time I went in Went, went to Thailand with a pre-existing injury. So I had a ruptured ligament to um, my left leg. But I've been training hard, so I wanted to go, go uh, continue to go and, um, and compete. So anyway, in the, I, in the fight, the guy did a very strong round kick. Um, this is in the second round. Round kick. To, uh, to the leg, I lifted my front leg up to block it. When I blocked it with my injured leg, the, as I blocked it, he kicked it, then my leg, the knee dislocated. So the knee joint came out, out of place. As he did that, I, as I landed, so he came forward and I executed a straight punch or what boxers would call a right cross. So a straight punch, and cross over, hit the person to the eye. His eye came straight up immediately. So that closed his eyes. He was almost knocked out. And they were four ounce gloves, so they were tiny. I mean, it's, it was just easy to to, uh, to hurt your opponent. Um, so once I landed, it was, but I couldn't move. So the leg, the knee, was dislocated. So I stood there, tried to get my knee joint back and pretended I was fine. And of course, by the time the other person started to recover, he was dancing around me and I managed to get the knee joint back into, uh, into, uh, back to my knee joint, uh, back into place, follow through with my kick. I kicked the opponent to the leg, knee the opponent's into the chest and the head and it was knocked out. But the story here I'm trying to say is again the center line punch or a straight punch is delivered from a rear position and again adapted at the time when I was blocking with my leg at almost at the same time block and attack. The third incident I want to talk about, this occurred around about 2004. Um, it was a very unpleasant situation, very unpleasant. Uh, and I, it, was, it was me protecting uh, people I care about that were under threat. Unfortunately, the the opponents were 
quite formidable because it, it was uh, it was this is a street situation, um, and there were very serious threats on need, and so I was um, faced with a huge gang of people, um, mainly led by about six main main guys. But I had a lot of people. I was on my own at the time um, with my young daughter. And I was faced with these guys I've been told were, yeah, um, they box, they, they do a fair bit of boxing. And they were, each one of them were twi almost twice my height. And, and uh, the main guy was you know, easily twice my size. So here's a lesson about street application in street situation and um, in a sporting situation. As I said earlier, in a street situation, you wait for your opponent or try to attempt to wait for your opponent uh, when they're at the weakest. In this situation here, because it happened so spontaneously, it was very difficult to to uh, prepare to have any plans apart from just responding and reacting there and then. Ordinarily, I wouldn't even consider um, dealing with that confrontation. You're completely outnumbered, and um, and anything can happen whenever you have more than one opponent, especially in a street situation. But I was uh, forced by these main six people with uh, a crowd of people behind them, their, their so-called gangs. And um, it was at a time when one of them in particular was, if you like, the head honcho, um, made threats, serious th threats. Um, and he confronted me. As he confronted me, I, of course, I warned him, didn't want any trouble, but he continued to, to confront me. So by this time I knew something was going to, bad was going to happen. And I had my hands, I placed my hands on the hips here like this, this hand. And I delivered the center line punch from that position, you know, shooting from the hips. So from there, I knew it was out of his central visual pathway. No way you can see it. And as the person got closer and he was getting more and more confident, as he was in range, I gave him warnings, continued to come along, then bosh, at speed. It was so fast, the guy, I struck the this person and he went down straight away. Busted his teeth, um, but I was hoping that would be the end of it because everybody just kept quiet. They just didn't know what to do because they thought I was gonna be, I was dead meat. So as he got up, he got into a boxer stance and he starts swinging. They're doing very wide, very powerful wind up uh, 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 left hooks. So I just ducked, move, miss, missed three times. As he missed three times, I was ready to knock, knock him out again. And then someone attacked me on the side with a concealed hammer. So I moved away, got the hold of the other person, um, and contained it. So the matter was contained. But I want to really just explain uh, again delivering the center line punch from a different position. This time it was shooting from the hips. And 
if I was to try to apply that in a ring situation, it'd be extremely difficult because when someone's ready for you and you're ready, it's very difficult to deliver such a long range punch. Uh, and, and whereas in a street situation, it's about setting up a trap, if you like, taking advantage of your opponent. And you have to also in the, in the situation try to think about someone else setting up you the trap. So you have to set the trap for the trapper. Uh, a good analogy, if you know. If a tiger is clever, and if a trap is set for the tiger to trap the tiger, maybe the tiger should wait until the trapper comes along and then eat it for food. That's really what I mean by uh, trapping the trapper. And in a street situation, it, you require a lot of um, um, cunningness um, and strategy. A good example would be Highly skilled fighters, extremely high. Look at, look at the fight between Habib and uh, Conor McGregor. Very highly skilled fighters. But when it kicked off, in the rules, yeah, outside the octagon, when it kicked off, he jumped over the fence. And but if that, there you go. That then they they couldn't apply the same skills as they would do inside the octagon because it happened so spontaneously, and. The mental abilities takes over when you're angry, your ego, your pride is involved. It takes a lot of your skills away and your strategies and your tactic, tactics. So had, let's say, Habib was really wanted to get at that guy with the blonde hair in the audience, he could have just content, held, you know, just took it easy, waited for an opportunity when he's closer to, to, to him and they make his move, but he made his move too early. And that's what happens in a street situation. So is some people then try to compare okay. situations and sporting situations. You can't, because they're, they're, they are different. There are similarities, but they are also different. And round this up, the center line punch, what you learn exactly in the in the gym, in the training hall, in the guan, in the dojo, has to be more flexible and applied according to the conditions and variables in a real life situation. And if you accept this argument, then that should be applied to all of your techniques. So here is this is the end of this um, today's video. I hope uh, this helps, and um, if you have any comments, please make it, and I'll try to answer it as much as I can.